Hello. So I went ahead and created a, a little animation system for our character here. Uh, she looks like she's tweaking out right now because the uh, system doesn't include any sort of um, motion in the root. Uh, ob the, the roots don't move like they do for the slimes. So we're going to have to program her to move uh, according to our key presses and to animate according to our key presses. Here you can see she's turning. If we turn that off, she'll go into a more idle stance, which is a much less obnoxious thing to look at. Um, and so our step today is going to be to build our character controller. We've actually already got the root of a character controller. It's called an avatar controller. And right now it is attached to this main camera here. Um, or the first person controller. There it is. So we're going to remove it from here. Um, we're actually going to just remove remove it like this. There we are. That'll, that'll do it easier. So I've just turned uh, it off as well as the death click and we're going to instead add our avatar controller to the an hero object. Here it is. Uh, it automatically added a rigid body because I actually require a rigid body uh, and I forgot to disable that. But it, this is the script that where previously all we had is this lo this locking cursor thing and now we're going to have a lot more stuff. Uh, it, we will require a rigid body. You can create other th kinds of things if you don't like rigid bodies, but a rigid body is nice and easy, so why not? Uh, the problem is that our rigid body... Yeah, there she goes. No collider. So we also have to add a collider. And I think that the capsule collider is the best option. Capsule colliders are pretty standard. Um, a lot of games use them on the order of uh, all games. <laughs> but they aren't the best in terms of uh, making it feel good. They have some obnoxious uh, traits that are very, very obvious to anyone who is uh, more experienced with uh, running around as a character. They don't feel very unique or interesting. We may change it out later. Who knows? So what we're going to do is we are going to go and put in our... Um, all of our work. So what what we need to do is uh, float vert equals input dot get axis vertical, and horizontal is input dot get axis horizontal. And of course, these are already set up automatically by Unity, so they work out fine. And if we want to just say uh, uh, rigid body dot velocity equals vert times transform dot forward. Oh, lowercase t, thank you. Plus hors times transform dot right. So now, when we go in here, and we look at the, the character and we press forward, nothing happens. Now the question is, why doesn't anything happen? Why isn't this character moving at all as we press the buttons? So to check on that, let's go ahead and put in a little bit of a print here, just to see what's going on. So we should get a steady stream of zeros and stuff. So you can see that the velocity exists, but it's not actually uh, moving the character at all. And the reason for that is actually because we have an animator that applies root motion. And you can see that's right here, apply root motion. So if we disable that, ah, now it works fine. Of course, by working fine, we mean that it looks really ridiculous. Uh, and of course, gravity isn't working right. Well, you remember why gravity doesn't work right. We're overriding the rigid body, rigid body velocity, and that means we have to remember to reapply the gravity. So vector three, sorry, vector three dot up times uh, rigid body dot velocity dot y, and that'll keep our gravity intact. Uh, of course, we were also falling over a lot, which is not so great. So we're going to turn off our rotation. So now, we can see that the character walks and reacts to our, our motion. Uh, we're kind of synchronized with her, as we are the camera, and it works in the same way. But uh, the problem here is that the character doesn't have uh, any animations reflecting that stuff, and she also moves really slowly. So let's go ahead and move our main camera down onto the hero, 
um, which we can do by dragging if we would like, but uh, it does have this mouse look script. I guess that's okay. Just drag it down onto the camera. And then we can move this camera into the right position, which would be There we are. That's more or less right. And of course, we don't need this first person controller anymore, so we'll just disable that. So, now we have the camera in the right spot, but we have to add in a bunch of details like public float uh, run speed equals 5, public float strafe speed equals 3. And now we can multiply our velocity by the correct values times run speed times strafe speed. Well, now we're moving right, correct that is, but we aren't actually getting any animations out of it. So let's go ahead and put in our animations. Now, as you might expect, uh, the animations are already set up. We've got a an animator, but we don't have any place to store it, so let's go ahead and create it. And then here in start, we can say, actually this should be in awake. We can say animator equals, we don't have to make it public, let's make it protected. We can say animator equals get component animator. Of course, that means that we also have to require component type of animator. Because otherwise it won't work out. We'll end up forgetting to put one on, and something will go wrong, and everyone will get upset, and we'll all die. So there's our animator, and uh, it should automatically get set. But we need, of course, to set the various parameters within the animator. So if we look here, our animator has three parameters, forward, strafe, and turn. It's pretty easy to simply set those to these values. So animator.setfloat forward, comma vert, animator.setfloat uh, strafe, comma horizontal. And if we go over into it, that should work. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like, shall we? Well, she's not pointed anywhere near the right direction for forward to make any sense. And that's because uh, I have disabled the apply root motion when it's attached to her. The animator, in this case, is uh, being told to turn her whole body left so that she's facing the correct way. And it's not listening because it's not applying the root motion. And what that means is that in this case, we don't want all of this stuff to be in the same place as our character because we're not animating the character's root motion anymore. And that means we're far better off if we have a, an empty object outside of it. So put the game object out here somewhere. Put it at 0, 0, 0. And we will call this uh, an hero. And we will drop our an hero character into it. We actually already got one. We could have just used that one. That's OK. Uh, and let's make sure that they're all uh, agreed on the position we should be in. So let's drag her feet up above the ground or we'll regret it. There we go. And of course our main camera can go attach itself to the outer object rather than the inner object. And all of this stuff that we currently have connected to the uh, to the animated object, we'll be putting on the surrounding object, which means we have to make this animator public. Or we can make it uh, private and get it from a child, but that seems like it might be a little bit iffy, so we'll go ahead and just do it like this. Uh, we don't require a component animator anymore. We will manually enter that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and move all of the pieces we want to move. We want this uh, rigid body to be on the outer object. Oh, you don't want to move. All right. Put the avatar controller on the upper, outer object, uh, and the rigid body automatically gets added, but it's an uninitialized rigid body. Uh, the capsule collider would also do well on that object, but again, it doesn't want to take. I'm not sure what the deal is, why sometimes you can drag them and sometimes you can't. We'll copy this one, and then we will paste it. If I can find the one pixel, which allows me to paste. There it is. Nope.
There it is. We have to set our animator. There it is. Our capsule is in the right spot. Everything looks good. Save the game. Hit play. And, uh... Well, now it looks like all of our controls are precisely backwards. And that's because Ion Hero is rotated 180 degrees. So there we go. Make sure she's facing the correct direction. And now let's spin around. Our camera is in the wrong spot now. Figures. This will work for the moment. Um, but we have to turn root motion back on. And let's go ahead and move that camera while we're here. Just uh, zero, zero. We'll make it negative 2.5 instead of positive 2.5 and rotate it down. There we go. So funnily, that didn't appear to have fixed this one particular issue. So our forward animation looks like it might be busted, but that's relatively minor. Uh, you can see that the animations play all right. Now, one of the problems we've got here is that we kind of jump into action, and it would be, uh, probably be best if we lerped into action. One of our options to do that is to keep track of the current settings in our um, in our animator here in our sorry in our avatar controller we can have like well what was the last setting we can just lerp between that uh, generally speaking a better option is to edit the actual um, inputs so we have our horizontal and our vertical here and right now they have a gravity of three now if you look gravity up it says speed in units per second that the output value falls towards neutral when it's at rest and similarly sensitivity uh, speed to move towards target value in units per second. So this means that it takes a third of a second for it to cool off, and it takes a third of a second for it to heat up. If we were to change this to 1 and 1, and do the same for vertical, now keep in mind there are in fact two vertical and horizontal axes, but these down here are for joysticks. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to do the same thing there. But that means that we get a much smoother acceleration we don't have we don't have a sudden burst but it also means that we do have a slower we do have a slower rise into motion we don't we don't suddenly start into motion that's fine for an rpg uh, it is an action game but it's supposed to be it's intended to be a little bit um uh ponderous you're not supposed to feel like you're playing quake so it's okay that our character feels like she starts up a little bit slow that's kind of the point the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach another mouse, uh, another mouse controller to this. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because we want to be able to turn the mouse horizontally. So if we look over here on our first-person controller, we've got this mouse look script. You notice that it's actually set up to be mouse X only. This script is exactly what we need, so we're just going to copy it, go over to Anhero, and paste as new. There we go. It's the exact same script. And you can see that we now turn and move as we want to. And we're animated. The animations aren't particularly good. Um, maybe I'll polish them before I give you the game for download. Uh, don't really know yet. I'll have to work on it, figure out what I want to do. I think that that run animation is pretty inexcusable, so I'll definitely fix that. All right, so in the next episode, we will start hacking at things. Won't that be fun? <laughs>